Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and yet another video on the UK Dental School series. This episode is going to be episode number 13 and all about UCLAN. So if you're a graduate and you're thinking of applying to University of Central Lancashire or you're looking at it, then this is the video for you. So make sure you keep watching till the end of it to find out what is it actually like to study at the University of Central Lancashire. As usual, there's going to be timestamps up here on the video somewhere um, in the description below and also as a pinned comment if you want to use that and jump around the video. But yeah, that's everything for me. I'm going to pass you over to Teresa to tell you all about the University of Central Lancashire. Coming up now, Teresa. Here we go. Hi everyone, I'm Teresa and I'm a final year dental student at UCLan. I'm originally from London and I currently live in Preston. So I studied um, Maths, Biology, Chemistry uh, at A-Level and I did French at AS and I applied for dentistry around my A-Level time but unfortunately I wasn't successful so I decided to um, study for another degree and I studied Dental Materials at Queen Mary University of London for three years and then I reapplied for dentistry in my final year. Um, that year I got four interviews from Sheffield, Queen's Belfast, um, UCLan and Dundee and I got offers from Sheffield and UCLan and decided that UCLan was the place for me. So I actually initially became interested in dentistry quite early on. I think I was around eight years old when I was referred to my orthodontist and she was such a boss. I remember leaving every single appointment thinking how much I want to be like her and how incredible she is. And once I had my orthodontic treatment completed and I had my braces off, the feeling I had was just incredible and I just wanted to share that with everyone else really. Um, when I grew a bit older, in year 10, I did some work experience at a local dental practice, uh, which um, eventually led to my first job as a dental receptionist at that same practice. And I guess it helped that as I grew older, I became more aware of how much I wanted a hands-on pro uh, profession and how much I liked interacting with people on a daily basis. The thought of sitting behind an office desk all day long for the rest of my life quite simply terrifies me. Um, I can't even sit still to study for an hour. So dentistry just seemed like the ideal profession for me. I was mainly drawn to UCLan because it's, it's a four year course. Um, but also the fact that it's mainly hands-on. Um, you get quite a lot of cl uh, clinical experience and it's quite early on as well. Um, I've always had small classes growing up, right from primary school all the way through to even um, my previous degree. So the fact that you clan, there's only around 30 students per year group, also seemed um, appealing to me as well. It means getting more attention and who doesn't like that? Um, it's also super impressive that um, since UCLan opened around 10 years ago, every single student going through the dental school has managed to secure a dental foundation training job. And that kind of reassured me. And going back to the fact that it only opened around 10 years ago, I like how modern everything is in the dental school and all the facilities we have. Um, when I looked around some of the other dental schools and they were more old traditional ones, I personally wasn't a fan of that. Going from London to Preston, which is a much smaller city, took some adjusting, I'll be honest, but now I absolutely love it here. Um, not only do I live, love living across the road from campus and uni, but I also like the fact that I'm 500 meters away from the center of town, so everything's close by, everything's local here. Um, and Preston's only around 40 minutes away from both Manchester and Liverpool, um, which are obviously great cities, both of them. And not only that, but um, we also have the Lake District on our doorstep, which is just absolutely breathtaking. So in terms of the course structure, as I said, um, we all have an undergraduate degree in a related subject. Um, and the course starts in second BDS, essentially. So naturally, that year is pretty hectic. Um, there were, I think, around eight modules that year. Um, and yeah, it was very full on. Luckily, after the first year, um, this dropped down to around five modules per year, I think. Um, and now in final year, we have three modules, which all run um, throughout the whole year. And um, we don't have any optional modules at UCLan, so all of the modules are mandatory ones. 
Um, you're expected to be available for university nine to five, Monday to Friday. Um, and in first year, it really was that you were in uni basically nine to five, Monday to Friday. Um, apart from the odd late start or an early and a lucky, an early finish if you were lucky. Um, after the first year, we are mainly based in on clinic, like I said, and in those years, you're expected to be on clinic from 8.30, ready to see your first patient at nine, until around five, normally, um, and that's two days a week. And the on the third day a week, you usually have a day of lectures, and so that means that we have around a day and a half to two days of self-study a week. Um, in final year, this kind of picks up and we're on clinic three days a week and have around a day of lectures usually. So which means that we have one day a week of self-study. Um, in terms of practicals, we actually start quite hands-on quite early on. Um, I think I did my first filling on the third day of dental school, if I'm not wrong, um, which was fun and it kind of got me motivated and pumped and ready to start. Yeah, so as I said, in first year, you've usually got a day and a half um, allocated to Phantom Head. You also have another day in the prosthetics lab and um, usually around a day for anatomy practicals as well. Um, the models and all the resources. Um, we also had a trip to the University of Liverpool to use their Human Anatomy Resources Centre, which I think is one of the only places um, in the country that gives you an opportunity to learn human anatomy using um, donated human cadavers. So that was also interesting. In terms of the teaching at UCLan, um, we're all obviously dotted around the northwest of England, as I mentioned, due to the different um, decks that we each, each allocated to. So um, we have a video conferencing facility which means that we can all essentially sit in the same lecture at our respective decks and we can all see each other and um, the lecture will be being delivered in live time there and we can interact with the tutors, we can ask questions and it's a good way of us kind of being together while we're not together, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, and obviously we've got more um, traditional lectures and stuff where we're all together in one lecture room um, as well as um, case-based learning scenarios and stuff as well. In terms of clinical activity, like I mentioned earlier, we start in Phantom Head around our first week of dental school. Um, from then we have it consistently all the way until we graduate really. Um, around June of first year we see our first patient at um, the DEX and um, during our induction to the DEX we got to practice uh, loads of procedures on each other, such as administering um, local anaesthetic, doing plaque and bleeding scores for each other, um, doing examinations, and yeah, stuff like that really. Um, God, I remember being so nervous to see my first patient. I'd worked myself up um, the night before, and we, we're, when we're on clinic, we're split into pairs. So um, one person plays dentist in the morning and sees their patient whilst um, the other is a nurse. And in the afternoon, this flips. Um, and I was dentist in the afternoon that day. So I remember um, working myself up all day about it. And the afternoon came, the appointment time came, and my patient didn't turn up. That was the most disheartening thing I've ever gone through. <laughs> All the anticipation and the nerves for someone to not turn up, basically. But, I mean, it's real life, it's dentistry, these things happen. Um, but it meant that when I went into, when I had, when I did eventually see my next patient the following week, I was kind of a bit more prepared, more calm. Um, I'd seen everyone else with their patients and, um, yeah, I was a bit more ready for it, really. Um, when I did see my first patient, it was an elderly gentleman, bless him, and he was, um, I did a an examination on him. Um, some radiographs as well as a, um, a little filling as well. So it was quite a hands-on first appointment in the end. Um, we have, when we first start out seeing patients, we have three hours for each patient. And I think I literally used up every minute of those three hours. So it's a good thing that I've sped up since really. We've got the four dental education centers, which are spread around the more deprived areas in the Northwest. Um, but they're all in primary care still. 
and um, we're super, super lucky to have a really good um, ratio of students to staff. Often on clinic, um, at my deck, we'd have sort of a tutor to each pair, really. So you get a lot of attention um, and it just means the tutors are always there whenever you need them. And yeah, super helpful. Um, in final year, we start at um, enhanced training practice, which um, we call ETP, again, in our respective deck areas um, and this is where we're based two days a week seeing a patient and um, we each have our own surgery we have a qualified nurse each and yeah it's a bit more like the real world really um, with the added support of knowing that the supervisor just across the hallway when and if you do need them um, so yeah and um, in fourth BDS, we also have secondary care placements in Maxfax, um, special care dentistry, orthodontics, and general anaesthetic paediatric clinics as well. Um, but unfortunately, we don't have any electives. So assessments at UCLan are mainly in the form of um, written exams and OSCEs, although we do have direct observed procedures called DOPS as well, and a few essay-based um, written assignments throughout the years as well. Um, in first year, it was quite full on and quite hectic. I remember we had a um, tooth morphology spotter, an anatomy spotter, a few practical clinical um, assessments as well. And I think in total we had like five or six written exams as well. But these were spread out throughout the whole year. Um, so you didn't feel too pressured, although it meant that you constantly had to be on top of your um, revision. It, didn't really kill you at the end of the day. Uh, I mean, everyone's made it out alive. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, we also have in um, third BDS, we also have a um, human uh, health and disease OSCE, which kind of focuses on um, diagnosing patients with other health conditions such as asthma, diabetes, um, and uh, focuses on medical emergencies and um, yeah, taking histories from patients, identifying when they have problems that aren't necessarily related um, to their oral health. And yeah, in the last two years, it's mainly written um, exams and OSCEs as standard. Um, we also completed an audit last year, which was assessed, as well as a project on human health and population as well. Um, and in final year, we have a, an exam in November, a professionalism exam, um, followed by two exams in March, which are our finals essentially. And then we have um, two case presentations followed by an OSCE in May as well. At UCLan, if you were to fail an assessment, um, you would get the opportunity to um, resit the exam. Um, if you do resit, um, the mark is capped at 50%. And if you were to fail that as well, um, I believe you'd have to take the rest of the year off and restart the year the following September. But I mean, ov obviously all of these are case dependent. So I'm sure you're all bored of hearing my voice now. So to wrap this up, um, I genuinely would recommend UCLan 100 times over. Um, I wouldn't hesitate to recommend it to any graduate as we don't currently have an A-level pathway. So you do have to be a graduate. But having small year groups combined with loads of clinical supervisors means that um, you never go unnoticed. You get all the help you deserve and that you need. Um, you really make the most of your time at dental school. Um, and being such a tight-knit community in such small groups means that everyone gets along really well with each other. Um, and um, we actually study alongside dental hygiene and therapy students in the first two years. And then we go on to also work alongside them um, at the DEX in our clinical years. Uh, which means that we kind of learn the importance of teamwork um, quite early on in our profession. And um, yeah, that's quite important. Um, the dental school also consists of clinical dental uh, technicians too, and the Dental School Society brings us all together. Um, and we've got some great events throughout the year. Uh, I mean, probably our most anticipated event is probably the Freshers Fortnight with our annual quiz every year and our um, Freshers Bar Crawl, which is always good fun. We also have a trade fair in um, January, which means that we get to kind of network with people outside the dental school, um, get some freebies, which is 
always a bonus. And um, you can even show off your baking skills at the Great Dental Bake Off. Having a good work-life balance is so important as a dentist um, to ensure you don't burn out. And these events are literally the perfect excuse to get out and enjoy yourself. Um, I genuinely can't imagine studying dentistry anywhere else. I don't regret my choice and if I had to choose again, I 100% would have chosen UCLan. Um, my one bit of advice to anyone kind of umming and erring about dentistry would be to make sure your heart and your head are 100% in the profession. It is such a demanding course, which eventually leads to a quite a stressful profession where you're in contact with patients for the majority of your week. So unless you genuinely enjoy the patient interaction and you've done your research and plenty of work experience to kind of see what dentistry is really like, you're gonna burn out and you're gonna fall behind really easily, really quickly. And yeah, it's something that if you're not passionate about, it's really hard to genuinely enjoy. And I mean, it's a long course, um, whether you're doing four years or five years, it's still, a pretty long time. Um, so yeah, don't go into dentistry half-hearted. Make sure it's something you're genuinely passionate about. So yeah, that's all from me. If you've got any questions about UCLan or anything I can help with, don't hesitate to contact me. And best of luck. Thanks for having me. All right, so if you made it this far, then I hope you enjoyed the video and you learned a few things about dentistry at UCLan. Um, if you have any questions about anything, you can either DM Teresa. I'm gonna put her um, Instagram details in the description and also up here somewhere on the video or you can just drop it down in the comment section below But yeah, take care and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace and goodbye